I'm not sure if I even want to react to this, Trixie. I mean, like, what is the point of being hated because you're being relevant in a show? I mean, think about it. You're not in every episode of My Little Pony. Heck, you're in one episode of season one, one episode of season three, or two episodes of season six, if you count the finale as one, but not two, a couple of season seven, a little bit of season eight, and a bit in season nine. You're not, you may not be the most relevant character, but you are special, and I love you so much. It's the same with Fiery. He may not, he may not have a lot of speaking lines in BFB, you know, but I still think he's awesome. So I don't know if I'm gonna react to this video if that's the case. But you know what? Since I love you and Fiery and all my viewers, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna react to it. Do they want it? I know they do. <sighs> How's it going, viewers? Mr. Incredible Bunny's back, and he's one with the punches, baby. Welcome to Incredible Bunny Reacts, and uh. This is gonna be the Fiery video by Object Cider. I've seen his Bubble and Leafy one. They were both uh, very interesting, making my mind confused. This one is literally titled, What Happens When You Stop Being Relevant in BFDI? What about being relevant in the other show? There are many shows I've seen where a character isn't the most relevant, but yet for some reason, you still love them more than the protagonist and the antagonist, you know? It, it, it tends to happen a lot. I tend to like side characters more than main characters. That's kind of what I do, really. So. I don't know how you're going to make sense of this, but Fiery did get less screen time. I know his personality changes for some people in a bad way, but he's still cool, okay? He has, he's still, you mean, he may not be the nicest. He did say once, remove the hater and got rid of Pin, you know? And he did still claim that he's the fast runner and uh, he got full out of the uh, donut thing with syringe and all that. He's done good things, even when he's not the most relevant. So... I really do not see this video being useful unless Objects Excited makes me change my opinion. I don't know, viewers, but let's see. <sighs> the Fiery video. One, two, three, react. Does anybody remember that Fiery won Battle for Dream Island? Yeah. He's also been in every Battle for Dream Island season, so that's fun to know. I was aware huh. of this win, but didn't think much about it. Mostly because I've heard absolutely nothing about it since the era in which Fiery One is so far in the past that even if you watched the show back in 2012, you would have barely remembered it. The I remember it. I'll always remember it. Much more active. They both had important roles in the storyline and were very observable characters <sighs> since they did so much. Contrary to popular belief, I don't actually hate Leafy and Bubble. I know I was insanely harsh to them in those. You were pretty harsh. Characters. How bad can they be? They both had a very compelling and the concept for both of them managed to stay relatively fresh despite the issues they might have faced along the way. I can understand why someone would despise both of them, but let's be serious here. Worst battle for Dream Island characters exist. Cough, cough, cough. <laughs> On the other side of this whole situation, Fiery has just been doing nothing. So let's explore how doing nothing secured him a win in Battle for Dream Island Season 1. I get... wait... That helped him win BFDI? He did some good things. I posted some new videos on my bonus channel. I worked on this video that you're you know the reason you won is because Flower was more hated back in season one, you know? I would have voted for her to win if she was her BFB version. On my last two uploads. And the support, of course, is coming from this three-part series that I'm making about the three most high-profile people in the dumpster fire. That is the battle for Dream Island finale. The first oh video gosh. was about I need to get how she literally so faked her entire existence. The second video was about Leafy and how she managed to destroy her reputation while she tried to destroy Battle for Dream Island's reputation. FYI, there's actually a video titled Top 10 Pony Characters Who Are Considered Wiper Material by Watch Pony, and Trixie's actually in it, despite her not being the most relevant character. So, explain that, please, Object Sided. Popular Battle for Dream Island characters. If you disagree, tell me one thing he's done in the past season to look good in front of the viewers. Got nothing. Exactly. But why Bruh. does anybody even care in the first place? Basically, I can nothing to do with the storyline, yet he has everything to do with the storyline in the show, where everyone is known for having their own character storylines and have tons of arcs specific. Exactly, that's what makes them all special. And none of them have any relation, and you love or hate them. 
It's weird, because if you take one of Fiery's actions in a storyline and replace it with any other character, Battle for Dream Island would continue perfectly fine. And honestly, that's probably what makes him so crucial. The show needs a backup character to pull everything off, and maybe that's why he's involved in so many different arcs. You may be thinking, okay, he's involved in a lot of character arcs, and everyone hates him. I don't get why he's different from any Battle for Dream Island character ever. He's really not, but over the past few years, if you look at his involvement with the series, you can realize that something weird is happening. For starters, he's losing fans at a rapid rate. Even if he is gaining fans, you won't be able to notice because there's more people hating than coming back to like him. As you can really? tell, something happened in his past at some point. All of this weirdness is stemming from a controversy with another Battle for Dream Island character. Eleven years ago, on January 1st, 2012, Fiery made the worst decision of his life. The decision that would cause him a decade of misery and defeat. The decision that proved he was nothing more than a backup character. The decision that cost him Dream Island. Fiery denied Leafy the right to enter Dream Island. He let everyone. Well, that was a bit of a. And this is it was kind of a dick move, but. Basically, what he, happened was that his battle. He did feel Leafy bad, though. On. Fiery saw right through Leafy's persona and made it his job to make sure that everyone knew the truth. It was very quickly revealed that Leafy wasn't a nice person. After all, and I talk about her effort to console her reputation in the second video. But the point is that people started putting the pieces together and realized that Fiery is actually kind of horrible too. The only problem was that Fiery didn't do anything to console his reputation when Leafy did. Another reason why this whole controversy was such a big deal was that both Fiery and Leafy were finalists in the original Battle for Dream Island season, which you can pretty much cite as the reason both of them were making it their life's mission to bring the other person down. With the combination of Fiery and Leafy both conspiring to take each other down and them being the highlight of the entire show, it turned out to not be a good look for both of them at the end. And when Ouch. Fiery just basically said bye and left the scene for five years, he pretty much lost everything. Fiery started to lose favor because he was the only one who had done something so drastic publicly. So people had less clear evidence to hate Leafy for. Leafy let Fiery take the fall for the entire situation and publicly distanced herself from him, very clearly giving him all of the blame. Fiery's reputation was in shambles. So guess what he does? He obviously clears everything up within the series and calms everything down. Right? No, he does nothing. Understandably, he wasn't happy about losing the fight against Leafy, but all he did was distance himself from Leafy until the fourth season. But we'll get to that later. Ultimately, I find the responses they took to everything a mixed bag because it had everything I hate from Battle for Dream Island characters. But I do feel like it was unjustified to make Fiery take all of the blame for the fight to win Battle for Dream Island. You win some, you lose some, right? Although, Fiery did nothing to survive in the second season onwards, when he easily could have, which makes it a little bit hard for me to sympathize for him. Really now? Explain. I've about what happened in this whole controversy, but now I want to talk about how it happened. I have opinions on what both of them did and how everyone reacted. I want to start by looking at why what happened was so effective in taking down not only Leafy's, but both of their reputations as BFDI's golden duo. The short answer is that the decision he took impacted the show's storyline tenfold. The long answer? First, let's take a look at motivations. There were obvious reasons both characters would want to sabotage each other. One being that the season was wrapping up and the vote to win voting was very close, so both characters had final says on each other before the result was released, and Fiery succeeded in swinging the public's opinion. He literally won in a landslide. It wasn't close at all. Both characters would yeah, also yeah, have yeah, you got the other in a worse position because, let's be honest, Battle for Dream Island was going to have more seasons, so they needed to create a lasting impact that ruined each character forever. And it's pretty safe to say that the finale did that, but not exactly how they expected. Fiery pushed Leafy to a breaking point, and I find the way he did it pretty insidious. Framing Leafy as a monster, and someone who couldn't be trusted was very precise and intentional. Yeah? He was the only character who had the supposed nice guy persona which was actually quite easy to take down. The reason why this narrative worked so well is because he was feeding us a hunch that many people already had about Leafy, painting her in a light. That many people already thought about. Another reason why Fiery was able to slide his misery off at first is because he was the most unproblematic person. At one point, people literally only liked him because he was the least problematic contestant in the list of remaining characters. Another reason why it worked so well is because Fiery set Leafy up to fail with his actions. He literally held a grudge against Leafy for one of the stupidest reasons ever, which is one of Leafy's biggest weaknesses stupidity. I'm guessing she's a weakness of herself. 
And honestly, after pushing her to a breaking point, it made it seem like she was this disrespectful and manipulative person trying to prove otherwise. Not saying she isn't disrespectful. Oh, and fuck crying out loud. Nonetheless, this is too much. All it took for people to start recontextualizing everything Leafy had done was a simple statement and action from Fiery. Now, all of her relationships with other contestants were motivated by greed and being power hungry, and all of these disgusting things. Fiery did what he did knowing that it could send Leafy into a very dark place, and I think that's what he should be criticized for. And sure, he apologized which is good, but it definitely doesn't make up for him being such a hypocrite. Another problem I had with all of this is that Fiery and Leafy started a battle for Dream Island chain reaction. Suddenly, all sorts of characters were setting out to find horrible things about their enemies, and it was just constant ramifications for other contestants' actions which caused the show to lose a lot of its meaning. Granted, Fiery's master plan wasn't necessarily the first, but it definitely was the biggest, and that's how Fiery managed to create a wave of new problems in battle for Dream Island. While simultaneously proving superior i just think it's interesting that fiery's actions and old mindset can come back whenever they want to like if he got bored he could try to prove how leafy was a horrible person again since they're stuck on a boat together not saying it would work though because we all hate fiery and already know leafy's a bad person but no that, that's no that's I not want to true some opinions on the response that viewers had on this entire situation throughout all of the explanation leafy has been a main target for criticism for everything for some obvious reasons but i think that fiery doesn't get the criticism he deserves let it be known that fiery is nowhere near as bad as leafy or bubble here's a recap bubble is a manipulative liar she tricked everyone into believing that she was a completely different person then she actually wasn't faked her entire existence leafy is a problematic masterpiece with controversies Steaming from her literal first words in Battle for Dream Island. On the other hand, Fiery has done none of that. Granted, Leafy did manipulate many people into thinking that she was the nicest person and she would never do anything to hurt anyone. But just because Leafy's bad doesn't mean Fiery's good whatsoever. Pushing Leafy into a dark place and setting a trap for her to fail was very disgusting, and he should be held accountable for that, and not something random like being bland. We're finally in the last section of this series. It's kind of crazy that this series is ending. We've only had three episodes, but it feels like all I've done on Objects I did for the past six months has been about this series. Right now, I just want to look at where this situation left everyone. And I'm interested in the music in the background. I just can't believe what's going on. But the situation altogether. Firstly, I want to look at the effect that the finale had on all three characters' reputation. The finale was obviously intended to make the characters go against each other, but all it did was make everyone hate them, so not really a miss for Flower getting fourth place. Have you noticed that Flower made it far in the first season, but wasn't a finalist, and yet won the island? I think that's pretty weird, but it makes sense, she didn't have to face the pressure of being a finalist. You see, before everything, Bubble was known to be insecure, sad, and lonely, but now she's known as this habitual liar and a pissed maniac. It justifies everyone's actions to call her annoying. Leafy, on the other hand, absolutely got dunked after the finale. Before, she was known as nice and comedic with a splash of jerk. But after the finale, people realized that she was just all around horrible. Fiery used to be known as being kind of immature and one-dimensional. Even before, Fiery was just kind of talked about in a negative light for being just so boring. But after the finale, Fiery's reputation was just tarnished, and nobody cared about him anymore. Not even me. All characters used to be legendary, and the best, but now they're just weasley and conniving. It's kind of sad to see characters I used to know and love just be tarnished by their own actions, but I guess it doesn't affect me, so who cares? What I've learned is that, oh my gosh, you cannot trust anyone, whether they're real or just a cartoon fantasy character. So those were my videos on Bubble, Leafy, Fiery, and the whole battle for Dream Island finale. I just want to say thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. That's literally insane, and I know we'll double soon enough. Anyway, I have been putting a lot of time into these videos, and I hope it shows. I wouldn't normally do this, but I want to ask you to subscribe since this has taken me so long to make that it's kind of insane. If you all keep watching, I won't videos, since I don't agree with your theories. I don't know what the next series will be about, but I have already I'm planning on like uploading it relatively soon, so watch out for it. But what I've learned from all of this is that all you need to get ahead in object shows is to manipulate people. Be manipulative. You must be manipulative. But I'm going to go play the Animal more Crossing you know. That doesn't make me feel horrible, but what about you? Well, you. Me? You should watch another video. Oh. <sighs> well. I don't know.
it's, um, I, uh, I, I don't know what to say, viewers. I really don't. It's, I'm very convoluted at the moment. I really am. I don't even know if I, I don't know if I would say this is actually a good video, in my opinion. Huh? Huh? Oh, come on! You gotta admit, this is cool! Okay, Syndrome, I don't need you and your opinions right now, please. Screw off. Thank you. Anyway, before I was, before I was, in before I was um, interrupted by my buddy... Yeah, I just called you that. I... I don't know. It, I still enjoyed it, but, like, my mind is still really confused now. It's like I'm watching The Twilight Zone all over again. It really does feel like that. It, because that show definitely messed my mind up, like, a lot, viewers. And that ain't bullcrap. But it smells like bullcrap. <sighs> Either way, um, thank you for recommending me um, the first video of his appearing on Bubble, of course. I, I, I enjoyed it, yeah. But um, Nana just got more ridiculous, really. I don't know if I agree with his opinion. I'm sure some of you do, and I'm completely fine with that. But I personally, I just love these characters so much that I just don't think I agree. I just don't see it. Maybe Minnie, maybe Leafy did manipulate me. Maybe Fiery, he is great because he does uh, most of nothing. But I, but then again, a lot of characters are good because they do mostly nothing. I, I don't understand. Luigi from Mario Party wins a lot of winning games by doing absolutely nothing. So I don't see your point how being relevant is a way to make you loved or hated. It should be just, it's any, it could be anything. I don't know. Anyway, I need to, I need to, you know what, I need to watch something to make me happy right now. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch a really funny video next. So, anyway, viewers, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. But, if you this particular video, leave a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested. Follow me on Instagram, link down below. And until then, stay positive, keep calm, stay safe, be incredible. And as always, bro, neat on. Peace.